Welcome back, Tau Fleeter folks. Jeff behind the camera, OG out here. The two of us have a yacht with a flag that says chilling the most, and we are rocking that biatch up and down the coast. Today, we're bringing you something a little bit different, and I know I always say that, and I know you're always disappointed because all, you're like, oh, OG, you just showed us another slug. But today, we actually brought you something a little different. A lot of people have asked over the years for us to shoot different things at the lead plate. It's a 30 pound lead plate. It's an inch and a half thick. It's a pretty formidable target. You've seen most, virtually, I don't know, 95% of the shotgun rounds that we fired at the lead plate have been stopped by the lead plate. We've had very few rounds that'll penetrate straight through. But the question always comes up, what handgun round, what, what would handgun rounds do to the lead plate? What would uh, certain rifle rounds do to the lead plate? So today we have spent quite a bit of time compiling all different rounds, all different calibers that we own, all the way from 22 caliber, nine millimeter, 40 caliber, all the different pistol rounds we own and all the different rifle rounds we own, up to a 6.5 Creedmoor, a 4570, um, a 3030, what else we have over there, 308. So we're gonna show you a whole bunch of different calibers against the lead plate. We're not expecting them to penetrate the lead plate. That would take some uh, impressive ballistics. I think some will easily go through it. You think? Yes. All right, well, Jeff thinks. I'm skeptical, so put your uh, your your, your uh, estimate down there <laughs> in the comment section before we even get started, then you can go back and edit it later to say how wrong you were or how right you were. Yeah. I don't think many, much of this stuff is gonna get through, even the high-powered rifles, but um, I could be wrong. I've, I'm often wrong on, on the internet. I'm wrong too, life. so we'll see who's wronger. All right, but we're not gonna show you a lot of slow motion camera on this, because it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of cool looking at something splatter. We'd rather punch a whole bunch of rounds into this thing. I'm gonna mark what caliber they are as we work our way around the target. And uh, hopefully we can show you some pretty cool penetration or lack thereof. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with a CCI Mini Mag followed up by a CCI Stinger. Fired out of a Ruger 1022. Doesn't look like a 1022, but it's a Ruger 1022 with a 16 inch barrel. No, it's 18 inch. And then the next one. And then the next one. All right, nine millimeter, 124 grain ball ammunition followed up with a nine millimeter, 147 grain uh, spear gold dot hollow point. When you are ready. I'm ready. Oh, you hit the 22. Did I? Yeah. You want, you want another one? Yeah, if you can. There you go. There you go. All right, Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter, which will shoot the 40 caliber. It's 180 grain jacketed hollow point uh, Federal HST, followed up by I think it's a Spear Gold Dot 10 millimeter, 40 and 10 from the same gun, same magazine. Hopefully we can hit something. <laughs> 45 in the, from the 45 USP with a 45 Expert barrel. Thanks, Craig Richardson. And uh, we're shooting a 230 grain I'm ball. Ready to top at 12 o'clock. Okay, so out of the FK Burno, a 7.5 millimeter, that's a strange one. We're going to give it a try out of the FK Burno PSD and see what it does. It's supposed to have short rifle ballistics first. Okay, so we've done, we've done our handgun rounds. Let's go through them real quickly. We started with our CCI Mini Mag. It's underneath this 9mm round. Sorry about that. We moved down here counterclockwise to the CCI Stinger. I'm actually kind of impressed with the kind of hole that makes. That's a 22, and it dug in there pretty damn good. We moved up here to the 9mm. Of course, I plunked one right on top of the uh, 22 Mini Mag. Uh, 9mm hollow point, 9mm ball ammunition. You can see kind of a difference in the hole there, nice and smooth and rounded out versus more of a splushed one here. And if you could see in there real tight, you would actually see the little marks, little striations from the hollow point impacting in there. It's kind of cool. Moving up here, we have, this is our 40 caliber, duh. 
and then our 10 millimeter and then our 45 this is the only one that captured the uh, the copper jacket of the round 45 ball plunked in there and then we brought you the 7.5 burno round which man look at that impressive crater went roughly halfway through the inch and a half lead plate and that's from a pistol so impressive ballistics out of a pistol size uh, package so now we're going to bring you some rifle rounds and starting with the weakest and moving on up and see if we can't get something to punch right through this all right the 223 round out of a mini 14 this is a target model that i just picked up i'm going to try to put the round in that gap to the left of the 7.5 millimeter a little 11 o'clock gap up there and see what we can do with a 223 round now kind of went in the gap now so we're going to shoot a an east german 762 by 39 round out of this chinese uh chinesium ak-47 wait and we have a nylon. What, what's what about the nylon or it's a nylon it's a very lightweight nylon round, round. East german round yeah yeah so we're going to see what it does versus we got a standard round right behind it uh, Russian, a uh, Russian. Okay, the first one's East German, second one's Russian. Yeah. Let's right. see. That one hit low from the M, but it's out there by itself. Well, they're next door to each other. Let's see. We're going to pause here and take a little break and show you the damage. The 223 round left deep in there, left us some little copper shards. Went almost made it through there's a bulge on the back of the plate here we followed it up with a nylon 76239 that's, East not, German. that's not the nylon oh nylon one's down there <laughs> the one that has the nylon in it you mean this has got a big old i don't know why they would make nylon target rounds why not just shoot what you're gonna be shooting you know especially if they have a different point of aim point of impact. yeah they, they do we found out so this has got melted uh, plastic right there in the hole did not make it through obviously but it's big brother the standard old russian 76239 went right on through punched right on through the plate and out the first back. first penetrating yeah first penetration so if that gives you any clue as to what might happen with these next ones they're they only get bigger from here probably going to go through so it appears I was wrong on some of these. Yeah. Let's take a look at them though. All right, Savage Model 340, bolt action, iron sights, shooting a 3030 round. This is my grandpa's now, old. I've always been told that 3030 and uh, like 762 by 39 are supposed to have similar ballistics. So this will tell us a lot, I think. Yeah. And unlike Edward Sarkisian, who brought back his grandpa's lunar module from the moon, this is actually my grandpa's old deer hunting rifle. So, so far it's per turned out to be pretty accurate. Let's put one in there, give it a try. Ready? Yeah. Smith & Wesson M&P 10 in 308 caliber. I'm gonna try to put one about the one o'clock area. There's a little blank spot. All right, uh, here we go. Woo, go. 6.5 Creedmoor fired from the Ruger American. All right, real quick break just to point these out to you before we ruin the rest of this plate and lose our way. <laughs> the 3030 round punched right through here and took off a big chunk of the lead plate. So actually a lot more damage than a 762 by 39. Yeah. So it's, it's a bigger round physically. And you always hear in FUD lore that 76239 is about the same as a 3030. However, we found that a 3030 is quite a bit more powerful, has a lot more powder behind it. And these rounds, by the way, are probably about 40 years old. Probably about the last time that gun was fired, too. Yeah. Punched right through the lead plate, even though it was on an edge. The 308 went right through the lead plate, no problem. Big, big hole. The 76 or the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor, although it didn't hit here where I was trying to get it, it punched right on through. Fast, light round. So it made it right through the lead plate. We've only got one more big beast for you the 4570 coming from the Marlin 1895. 4570 round, that's a hard nosed cowboy load. Coming out of the Marlin 1895 SBL. I'm hoping to put it in the little gap there between the T and the F. Let's see. Oh shit. Yep. Because I think I flinched on that last one. 
Well, that one went through. So my first 4570 landed up here somewhere. No, it didn't. I thought I, I thought this was the one. No. Down, down, which down. One, which one? Which one? Which one? Here? Yeah. You can okay. you even see the the jacket in it. It's still oh. buried in there. All right. So it hit in there. It wasn't exactly accurate where I wanted it to go. I aimed for the nine o'clock area, and boy, it took out a huge chunk right there. So lead 4570 hard cast rounds punched right through. At least on the edge, it punched right through. We only have one more round that we have not shot today, but you have seen it before. The Russian Extreme Penetrator. Looks like a little Phillips screwdriver, all brass. Let's see if we can punch it through here. I think you guys know what might happen. Maybe. <laughs> Russian Extreme Penetrator, all brass. We're gonna fire it out of Danny's Mossberg here with Danny's little red dot Bushnell and see if we can punch it straight on through. Here we go. There you go, that was Ooh. right on target. Wow, and straight through. So we were both a little surprised. I was shocked that some of the lighter rounds, some of the lighter rifle rounds actually made it through. I didn't think they were going to. So I hope you guys got some information off this too, just how durable this inch and a half thick lead plate is. I mean, we punched the crap out of it. Look at the back of this thing. Ouch. And the one right in the middle, that's the Russian Penetrator. That's the Russian Penetrator. Uh, we've collected these chunks of lead from all over the ground, so we'll re try to recast those in there. Well, I hope you guys like this a uh, little bit different test. We, um, we've always kind of wondered what's going to punch right through this. We, we obviously know some of our heavier slugs would, but I was actually kind of shocked at some of the rifle rounds that went through this. And I was actually kind of surprised at the pistol uh, and lighter rounds that the look at look at that 45. That is the most that is the saddest looking thing I've ever seen. Which one's the four? Oh, here? Yeah. Yeah, it made a little bit of a splash and left its copper jacket in there. So. Yeah, it is. It's a slow fat That is fat the saddest round. sad thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's oh. only moving at about 900 feet per second and it's a big old half inch round. So it's just tumbling along. Boop, ba, doop, ba, doop. It's actually got the sound of a tuba following it down range. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And you've got time to jump out of the way and watch it fly past you. <laughs> Just like the cartoons. <laughs> Just like the cartoons. All right. Speaking of cartoons, the fun is over, and uh, we hope you like this it's kind of a kind of interesting test, a little something different to uh, break up your day. So, thank you very much for coming by, and just for you, I brought you a piece of lead. Till next video. Tasty.